Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. It is. Um, so, I don't know what you guys watched last week, nor do I care, so... I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, right into it. Uh, Aaron speaks for Moses. Now when the Lord spoke to Moses in Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I tell you. But Moses said to the Lord, Since I speak with faltering lips, why would Pharaoh listen to me? Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of this country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. <laughs> and though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment I will bring out my decisions. My people, the Israelites and the Egyptians, will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. So, basically... I'm going to make an excuse to destroy Egyptians. Yes. Hard. Hard. So notice that he's saying, yeah, you're going to do this to Pharaoh, but he's not going to listen to you. I'm going to harden his heart, which implies that God is fiddling with his free will and making sure that he cannot right? let them go. So out goes the thing that God doesn't fiddle with free will if you're a Christian. Moving on. <laughs> Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. Wow. They yeah. don't ever depict them that old, do they? Nope. And the uh, thing you gotta notice here, he says that uh, Moses is like God to Pharaoh and Aaron will be like his prophet. This is because Moses, you often see him depicted as this very grand figure who, you know, maybe could make a really great speech. But the point here is that right now he can't, and Aaron has to do all the talking for him because he's right. nervous and can't. Yeah, talk. um, the way it they say um that Moses has faltering lips, uh, I kind of take that as like he stutters. So our hero could have a big stutter. You never know. Anyways, moving on, we're gonna get to the various plagues now, which are the staple of this story. Oh, it's the plagues episode. Gotta love it, man. Mm. Who doesn't love some good plaguing? Mm -hmm. We know God does. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned his wise men and sorcerers, and the Egyptian magicians did the same things by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff and it became a snake, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs, yet Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. How convenient... Is it that there's a group of it, you know, a few people that all knew how to do snake staff? Yeah, that's stuff. a very specific trick. Obviously, <laughs> at this point, yeah. we know that magic doesn't really exist. At the writing of this book, however, it's less known. You could probably imagine some people mastering some sort of mystical arts that, of course, don't really exist. Right. So that's why this might come up in this story. It also shows that the magicians can do the same things that uh, Aaron and Moses are claiming they're doing through the power of God, but that comes up again later, so I'll mention it then. As of yeah. right now, though, it makes it seem that's really unimpressive that you turn that staff into a snake since they could do the same yeah. exact thing. I just... Uh, what are the odds? Is there a snake staff guild? Like, a specific yes. sect of yes. magicians? Yes. And all they do is make yes. snake staffs? Yes, Neil Patrick Harris is a member of it. Moving on. The first plague, the plague of blood. <laughs> Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. He did it. Yeah. And also, remember that he's not asking Pharaoh in any way to let the slaves go free. He's saying, let us go out into the wilderness for three days to worship our Lord. Yeah. He's not saying let them free like it's depicted in media so often. He's not saying that. All right. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the river. Confront him on the bank of the Nile and take in your hand the staff that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, he sent me to say to you, Let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now you have not listened. 
This is what the Lord says. By this you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff in his hand I will strike the water of the Nile, and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die, and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Lord then said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and canals, over the ponds and all the reservoirs, and they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in vessels of wood and stone. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile, and all the water was changed to blood. The fish in the Nile died, and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's interesting that uh, every single place where there's water in Egypt, there is now blood in its place. Of course, the Nile is the main source of fresh water for right. e for Egypt. Uh, but if it's all water, where's yeah. the source? Where's hmm. where is the actual beginning of? They didn't think this through. Right. The blood so check has it to out. Yeah. We looked. Here's where the Nile starts. Way down here. All the way up there, there's blood. So it would have had to start from the source because it said all the water. It doesn't just, like, fucking start. I mean, what we're going to get is some Christian apologist going, well, there was a, you know, just a local. Yeah. It stopped. It just turned into blood miraculously. No, because it's got to it's gotta infect the entire Nile. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's silly. But, uh... Again, he says, But the Egyptian magicians did the same thing by their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart became hard. He could not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his palace and did not take this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the river. Oh. Yep. That is what it is. Next, we get the Plague of Frogs. We're going to just paraphrase this one very quickly, but essentially what happens is Moses and Aaron go back to Pharaoh and say, Hey, if you don't let us go, there's going to be a plague of frogs. They're going to be everywhere. And, and apparently frogs are just fucking horrible to be around. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, so Pharaoh again goes, no, I'm not doing it. They allow frogs to show up, and uh, yeah. he doesn't like it. Yeah, I've heard um, apologists uh, say that there's like a reasonable explanation for every single one of these I've seen a special on the um, quote history channel about yeah, it. Where it goes they're, like they're stretching. The river, as soon as the river turns to blood, because that one has to happen. And I think well, it have to be blood. It could be like anything. But uh, then the frogs come out, and then so now they're all over the place. So the frogs just came out of the Nile. <laughs> Is that really? I mean, mm. were there that many frogs? Were there that many frogs? <laughs> What's interesting to me is that, again, it also says that the magicians were able to duplicate this. How? They're already frogs, and they just go, look, we also made frogs. And then just, <laughs> no, those are our frogs. <laughs> well, you see, I put them in front of a thing, and I cut some trees up, so now they're stripy frogs. Oh, wow, that's a reference to an episode we did a while ago. Throwback. But again, Pharaoh's like, no, nah, fuck y'all. Because I'm Pharaoh. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Ooh. Then a short paragraph called The Plague of Gnats. Yeah. I wonder what that means. Yeah. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground, and throughout the land of Egypt the dust will become gnats. Ooh, uh... There used to be a, a line of thinking, I believe it's called Spontaneous Generation, if I'm wrong, please correct me. And it this is, uh... Like a piece of meat would grow maggots, which would yeah. grow flies automatically. They used to think that things could just appear out of nothing yeah. this wasn't necessarily yeah. everybody believe this but this was something that it was uh, thought to genuinely be a thing right there's there wasn't maggots on this rotting piece of meat before now there are right. they must have grown from the rotting piece so of the meat. guy put a uh, a lid on one piece of steak and another one was just open and one got them and one the other one didn't. yeah it, it's a whole thing it's it's yeah. interesting uh, also, partially how pasteurization came to be, but uh, that's another story. Uh, the <laughs> point is interesting to see the idea of uh, spontaneous uh, uh, spontaneous appearance of life forms from non-life uh, right. in the Bible. They did this, and when Aaron, Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground, gnats came on people and animals. All the dust throughout the <laughs> land of Egypt became gnats. Oh, gnats came on people and animals. Just a bunch of gnat semen yeah. everywhere. Can you imagine? What a terrible plague. <sighs> Little gnat semens. Oh, just we're jacking off onto animals and people. I swear we're not 14. <laughs> that's, that's still funny. Yeah. 
But when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not. So Ooh. here's the time when they actually couldn't uh, couldn't do it. Right. Since the gnats were on people and animals everywhere, the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen, just as the officials said. Yeah, so that's uh, yet another plague. Yeah. Uh, the next one is basically the same thing, so again, we'll gloss over it. Just the plague of flies. Essentially, it's the same exact thing, but instead of gnats, it's flies. Simple yeah. enough. Uh, also, though, at the end of this, uh, Pharaoh does finally read, I'll let you go, but you can't go very far. So he's kind of le- giving a little ground. He right. says that like a... he says um, Pharaoh said, "I will let you go and go to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God in the wilderness, but you must not go very far. Now pray for me." Moses answered, "As soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only let Pharaoh be sure that he does not act de- deceivingly by not letting his people go to offer sacrifice to the Lord." Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The the flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Not a fly remained. So even the flies that were there before, I assume, are gone. Yeah. like, no, no flies, motherfucker. Just a giant blue light in the sky and they all <laughs> fly to it. Yeah, Ralph. Anyways. Ooh, that was a good movie. Yeah. Nextly, we have the plague of livestock, which is pretty straightforward. All that happens is livestock of the Egyptians dies, but the livestock of the Hebrews does not die. Right. Uh, and Pharaoh looks at this and he goes, oh, fuck. That's about it. <laughs> oh fuck my cows uh, next is the plague of boils again pretty straightforward but uh, I'll read it anyways <laughs> <laughs> then the lord said to Moses and Aaron take handfuls of soot from a furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It'll become a fine dust over the whole land of Egypt, and festering boils will break out on people and animals throughout the land. Because, you know, boils come from dust. That's where I get my boils from. Yeah, this is where disease comes from. Yeah. So they took soot from a furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it in the air, and festering boils broke out to people and animals. <laughs> I'd like to think, this is an interesting scene, because this is a plague that really, really wouldn't be instantaneous. Right. So I'd like to think they went up silently to Pharaoh, and he's like, oh shit, what's it going to be now? They just went, whoosh, threw the dust into the <laughs> air and walked away. <laughs> and then they're like... Like a week later. He's like, oh man, I have these festering boils. I like how they qualify it with festering. <laughs> So they're, it's leprosy, is what they're, is that what they're trying to say? I don't know. They're festering. I don't, it's not necessarily leprosy, but, but yeah, and then, you think he connected it? Like, that was probably from that dust thing he did earlier. I thought it was weird at the time, but now I'm like, dust boils, it all makes sense now. The ancient people were weird. Yeah. The plague of hail. How is that a plague? It's just... Meteorological plague. events are plagues now. That yeah. doesn't count, God. You can't count, oh, it just so happened to hail, let's throw that in the book. <laughs> now they're sitting down editing the That's Bible. That's why the hurricanes hit. Right. The gaze. Or the gaze. So God's sitting down at the table editing his book with the publishers. He's like, yeah, I want to do this thing. It's called the Bible. And they get to this part, and they're like, yeah, uh, why are you claiming that hail is yours? You don't have a citation for this. You didn't put it in your work cited. Here's the thing about that. Um, ten is a nice even number. Ten fingers, ten toes is just how it goes. Uh, so we need to have ten. So I'm just, it kind of happened to hail. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there so we have a nice even 10. It sticks in people's mind. I'm thinking about doing it again for uh, the commandments, although a lot of those I had to bullshit about false idols and not taking my name in vain again to get to that 10. But it matters. Okay. Moving on. So the Plague of Hail happens, same shit as always, but it's like really bad hail, I guess, or something, uh, which is a bad excuse for a plague. All the crops were... Yeah, the crops were destroyed also because of the hail, because, you know, hail. Uh, And then we go on to the Plague of Locusts. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his officials, that I may perform these signs of mine among them, that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians, and how I performed my signs among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. He so sounds like a mobster. He's making a point. He's like, Yeah, you see what I'm doing here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this guy. I'm gonna be like, Hey, don't fucking worry about it. I'm not gonna do it again. Just hide in your heart some more. And then I'm gonna come back. Gonna get him again, huh? What do you got? Bugs now. Bunch of locusts. Bugs all over the place. Eating your shit. Eating your clothes. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. They will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little you have after the hail, including every tree that is growing in your fields. They're harvesting trees. That's our crop in Egypt. Trees. Trees. You know, to make pyramids. <laughs> we gotta make pyramids out of trees. When you think clay bricks would be better? Shut up! Let's get some... We gotta have a quarries of stone. No. I want trees! Verse 6, they will fill your houses and those of your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your parents nor your ancestors have ever seen from the day they settled in this land until now. You know what would be better for this whole whole long thing to do they have like what four paragraphs what if it just said plague of locusts ew bugs and then we could just move the fuck on yeah that'd be nice don't worship the lord your god pharaoh said but tell tell me who will be going moses answered we will go with our young and our old our sons and our daughters and with our flocks and herds because we are to celebrate a festival to our lord pharaoh said the lord will be with you if i let you go along with your women and children and clearly you are bent on evil no have only your men and women go worship the Lord, since that's what you have been asking for. So it says, um, bent on evil, has a little superscript A, or be careful, trouble is in store for you. <laughs> like, like, fuck you, or be careful on your trip, guys, I'm really worried about your uh, well-being right now. Uh, I like that they chose the one that clearly makes Pharaoh to be a dick, and not yeah. the one where he's like, just be careful, don't bring your kids, it might be dangerous. <laughs> now he's like, no, fuck your kids. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence, and the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt so that the locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields. So now we have uh, the locusts, uh, which hadn't happened. He, he had threatened him with the locusts before, but now he's actually going through with it now that he had said no. They invaded all of Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before have there been such plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. <laughs> Let's, I really hope there's a huge plague of locusts soon, so yeah. we can be like, fuck you, look it out, you liar. They'll just, they'll all they'll say is, well, it wasn't as big. <laughs> it just wasn't. What if it fucking went through the whole earth? The whole earth? The whole earth was just covered in fucking locusts. We need to manufacture this. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. <laughs> Nothing green remained in the tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. Doesn't sound like a thing a Pharaoh would ever say. The Lord your nope. God. He would not. Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord changed the wind in a very strong west wind. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, west. Take locusts. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 so west of Egypt, so fucking just like a bunch of Africans. Yep. Just fucking like starved and died. So, okay. Yep. A lot of dead Africans. Mm -hmm. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. So again, we have him saying, hold mm. on, free will. Nope, gonna make sure the Pharaoh doesn't want to let him go. Right. <laughs> Moving on. The plague of darkness. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky so that the darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. No. <laughs> uh, I don't think you can... I mean, maybe just, like, making a... Like... Like... Make them feel it. Like... It feels so dark. It feels so dark. I can, like, lick the darkness. Mm -hmm. Why is that the first thing I thought of? <laughs> you just like to lick Of it. any tangible thing you could do to darkness, let's fucking lick it, Jake. Yeah, you're stupid. Yep. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. All no, right. Yeah. Um... Not any record of no darkness. Nope. That's not how the sun works. Um, no one... I've heard a theory. Okay. I've heard a theory. Egyptians in their religion were not afraid of solar eclipses. Right. So this... Three days of solar eclipse? I'm just saying. They... 
technically, they shouldn't be afraid. I mean, three days, yes. And obviously other people and other religions and other people uh, would have around the land it. would have written about it. But I've heard the theory, a sandstorm? That's the best one I've heard. That's the best one. That's, that's all I got. That's really bad. That is really bad. But that's... Especially with how they uh, then qualify it. Yeah. Well, they can feel that. Yeah. Know. No one can see. No one could see anyone else move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had lights in the places where they lived. Oh. How does that even work? The Egyptians don't have lanterns or candles or any sort of oil burning. That makes sense. Uh. The Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flocks and herds behind. But Moses said, You must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock, too, must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. We have to use some of them in worshiping the Lord our God. And until we get there, we will not know what we are to use to worship the Lord. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Why does he keep fucking with that free will, man? Because he's a douche. Pharaoh said to Moses, Get out of my sight. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The the day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. Okay, um, yeah, um, my theory behind this, uh... Is that it's all a ploy. All this hardening of the heart is just a ploy to make an excuse to do what he will do next episode. Yep, cliffhanger. Don't you love that? <sighs> How do you like so, that? That's it for this episode. Um, Thanks, everyone, for watching. We got some new subscribers recently. Um, yeah. Um, lots of cool stuff. I'm actually doing the Twitter thing now. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to follow me, I'm at Hugo Reloaded, I think. Hugo Reloaded. I'll put I- the link. And I'm at... Bible Reloaded. Yeah, he handles kind of the official one. I'm tertiary. I'm not on there as often, but I'm trying to do it more. Right, but Hugo does the Reddit and most of the... Not most, a lot of the Facebook stuff. Also, um... A couple other things. Uh... We both got Bioshock. I think that's important to know. I don't think that's important Everyone to know. Everyone needs... We have a lot of gamer friends. We got Bioshock. They need to know. If you haven't gotten it, go fucking buy it. It's pretty great. It's so good. I beat it in literally two days. That's... The Lighthouse! Ending spoilers. Anyways. I better beat it before this episode goes now because now you're going to... Because he beat it way before me. I just got it today and he had it two days before me. So. Yep. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we actually had some people buy some shirts. So yeah. That's, we, nice. Anyway. I, I appreciate that. And let us know who you are because we'd like to say thank you personally. Yeah. Um, also, other people, what the fuck? Yeah. I know buying... they're a little expensive, but remember, it comes back to us. So you're supporting us. And uh, we don't get a check until we make like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So, uh, uh, share us with everyone. Uh, yeah. Other than that, thanks for listening. I'm Hugo. I'm Jake. This has been the Bible Reload. And I'm all out of goldfish. Oh.